Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. Today I'm going to talk about two very important knives in my collection and they are probably the two knives that you guys will hear the most about when it comes to Japanese knives. And the first one is the Tojiro DP 210mm Gyoto. The second one is the Masamoto VG 210mm Gyoto. Now these knives are very similar superficially on the exterior they look very much the same but there are very obvious differences that you guys will know once you guys get a hold of them and instead of just talking about some of the the superficial differences I want to talk about the things that really make uh, really separate these two knives okay so the Tojiro is a little heavier okay it uh, I don't have to have a scale with me so I can't tell the exact weight but the Masamoto is a little bit more nimble in their hand and it's definitely much more easy to use Though the Tojiro is not heavy, but after you use the Masamoto, you will know that the Tojiro, the, the Tojiro is much heavier, okay? The handle on the Tojiro is slightly longer and also slightly more angular. The Masamoto has a slightly shorter handle and a little more rounded. All the edges are much more rounded and I have had friends over who are well over six feet tall with big hands. They did not ever complain about uh, sharpening or using the Masamoto. The next thing is the way the knives behave on the cutting board. The Masamoto has a really gentle curve in the spine and also a much more pronounced belly. So it gives you a much easier rocking motion if you are the chopper and rocker. The Tojiro has a slightly uh, more flat and constant belly. So it limits your range of motion slightly when compared to the Masamoto and has a very uh, straight spine. Okay. The next thing is fit and finish. Now this is really where the Masamoto shines and, and something that you guys need to take note of. Out of the box, the Masamoto, all the, all the angles and the edges are pretty well touched up and refined, okay? You won't have any uh, edges that are very, very sharp that will feel like it can cut you. On the Tojiro, you have to take sandpaper and file all the spine edges down. Even the bolster areas need to get filed down in the cho in the choil. If you don't do that, the knife actually feels quite uncomfortable. Okay, so this knife here is pretty well worn down, and that's because it's been on my in my videos for the last 30, 40 videos that I've done. And in terms of cutting performance, the Masamoto it's much more pleasurable to sharpen on. I mean, I sharpen on and cut on, and we'll get to the sharpen part next. Now in terms of cutting, you will find that the Masamoto it's much easier to rock and cut meat on, okay? So because it has a really nice groove here for your palm to rest on, uh, there is virtually nothing in the way of you rocking on meat. And something that you guys will not see in uh, a lot of comparisons, and this is actually the angle at which the tip will actually inhibit the knife from being raised any higher on the Tojiro. This is the Masamoto. You see how much higher the Masamoto actually goes relative to the, to, to the Tojiro. So this is the angle at which the tip touches and you can see that Masamoto is almost twice as high compared to the Tojiro. So a lot of times you'll read about people actually chipping the tip of their Japanese knives. It's because Oftentimes they're using it like they like they would on a European knife and they actually will come up and chop and come up too high and the tip will actually dig into the cutting board or into something that will actually cause it to chip and break. So that's something that I don't like so much on the Tojiro. Another thing, now this is not so much a case for me because I have, you know, small hands, but the knuckle clearance on the Masamoto on this particular uh, sample is it's 46.7 millimeters from uh, tip to the spine. On the Tojiro, this is 43.1. Okay, now I know that three and a half millimeters doesn't sound like a lot to you, but trust me, for people with bigger hands, that three and a half millimeters is a big deal. And I've never had any sort of nickel clearance issues with the Masamoto. On the Tojiro, I have had to adjust my grip sometimes when I'm cutting on uh, on the cutting board because I've had uh, my knuckles actually touch the cutting board when I'm chopping or I'm cutting or slicing. So there has been times where I I didn't enjoy the Tojiro as much simply because of the knuckle clearance. 
As you guys know, I do a lot of knife sharpenings, and I find that the Masamoto is so much more livelier and responsive on the whetstone compared to the Tujiro. Now, I have done about 30 or 40 videos on the Tujiro, and thinking back, I really am regretting that I did not use the Masamoto more often. Uh, I, you know, the reason I bought the Tujiro is because it was inexpensive uh, relative to the you know, to the Masamoto. And it was just a knife that I can beat up and really abuse and not feel guilty uh, beating up. But after my last couple of videos of, uh, especially the last video of the the Japanese uh, sharpening stone series, and I, mm. I sharpened uh, the KS on the Chosera and the Cerax, those two stones really came alive uh, being sharpened on the KS, okay? And... The next day, the day after, I went back to the Tujiro on the same stones and the knives or the stones just did not feel the same. They felt slightly deadened and boring. And that's when I realized I need to stop using the Tujiro as good as a knife as it is. I really start should, uh, I should really start using my Masamoto's because these are the kitchen knives that I'll be using inside of my home pretty much from now till till whenever, till the day I die. I don't want to say that. It sounds kind of gruesome, but I'll be using these knives for a long time. And so I really should know what they feel like on the whetstone instead of using the Tojiro. So from now on, you guys really won't be seeing me use uh, using these Tojiros anymore. And as a matter of fact, I will be selling them. So if you're interested, if you're watching this video and you are looking at the Tojiro and you can't spend the money on the Masamoto, which I recommend you, you know, between the two knives, obviously with Money not being the issue, the Masamoto wins hands down in every category. There is nothing that the Tojiro wins over the Masamoto except for price, okay? But if you guys can't afford it and you guys want to spend under 100 bucks for a Japanese knife, the Tojiro pretty much is one of the best knives you can buy uh, in under that $100 price point. Now, you do have to do some work on it. You got to polish it a little bit with some sandpaper, um, you know, touch it up in certain areas. But after that, the knife is actually quite a good knife. But yeah, there you go. Um, hopefully that makes some sense to you. And I know I've had a lot of people ask me the difference between these two knives. I've, I haven't had time to put this video together. So just because of all the other videos that I'm doing. So here it is. Uh, those are the two uh, Those are the two knives that, uh, that you guys may consider in your first or second purchase of a Japanese knife. And uh, thank you for watching. I'm out of breath right now. And I will catch you guys in the next video.